So, this is me. I am a successful and unsuccessful entrepreneur. I've worked at big brands and big businesses like Facebook and Twitter. I'm a writer and a speaker. And I have done all right. My life is pretty sweet. I have four beautiful gifts of children who are amazing and clever and funny and inspire me every day. And I have a partner who helped give me those gifts who's even more amazing and inspiring to me as well. My life is pretty sweet. This is also me. I am an addict and I have depression that sometimes means I can't get out of bed for days and weeks. And I also suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, which if I don't take medication for that every single day, I have nightmares every single night. You might ask how those two people live within the same body. How can somebody who's, you know, mental, mental illness would, would stunt them normally from growing and, and being, you know, achieving what they want to do, be in line with someone who seems to do everything they want to do? And Aristotle was pretty, pretty spot on, I think, when he said that everybody, every great mind has a touch of madness. It's just that some of us have just a little bit more of a touch of madness than others. In fact, last year, a group of researchers at the University of California ran a little test of you know, a few hundred people and asked if you had experienced some lifetime interruption of your mental health, some mental health, a mental illness at some stage in your life before. The comparison group, 32% of people said in their life, yes, they had experienced a mental illness at some time in their life. 32%. Seventy-two percent, though, was the number when that same question was asked of people who were entrepreneurs, who aspired to have their own businesses, to have their own startups, do their own thing. That number of mental illness actually increases by over double. People like me are more susceptible to having mental health illness than everybody else. And it's not just you know depression, which is double. ADHD in entrepreneurs is six times that without. You can see bipolar, substance abuse, anxiety, all increases if you have an entrepreneurial flat, which I know a lot of people in this room do too. And people talk, in, when you're an addict and when you're in therapy, people talk about the defects of your character, the character flaws that you don't like, or that the things that other people don't like about you. They call them defects of character, but what I want to take, tell you today is that I prefer to think of those things as gifts. The gifts that have been given to me by having a mental illness, by being a little bit different, a little bit off, compared to other people. The first one of those gifts is, or comes from the fact that I am unreliable. I'm not unreliable in the sense that you wouldn't, if you had a startup idea, you wouldn't give me a million dollars to help you start it up. That happens all the time. That's not the point. But more unreliable in the terms of if you have a cat and you're going on holidays for a month, you probably don't want to leave it with me. <laughs> I fatigue easily. Because of my depression, I get tired really, really easily. The gift of that, though, is that when I get really tired, I get the rest that I need. And so many people in the entrepreneurial world or small business world who go, 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 want to build, build, build all the time, they don't get the rest they need. At least I know when I'm fatigued and I need that rest. I am unpredictable. Every single day, you don't know who you're going to get with me. Whether you're going to get the really good Nick, or the annoying Nick, or the tired Nick, or the sarcastic Nick, or whatever. The gift of that, though, is I can be unpredictable, yes, up and down. But when I'm up, when you get the good Nick, it's actually really good. I'm not risk averse. Risk does not scare me, it doesn't bother me. The gift of that is that as a startup advisor and a startup investor, that's a really actually cool thing to have. Because often the people I'm talking to in business, or to talking to me about their business idea, are more conservative in nature. And so sometimes they need that push along and I can give them that. I have crazy obsessive thinking. I obsess about the minutiae and minutiae. And that's a really helpful thing in my world, in my business, because I can see the little holes that you can't see. 
I can see the little ways that I can just twist the lever a little bit, just adjust the world a little bit to get a better scalable outcome from my business and your business. That crazy obsessive thinking that comes from being an addict and comes from having a mental illness is actually really beneficial in someone who startups, who advises startups or invests in startups. And this is absolutely true, that I create beautiful, effective, powerful, wonderful, really good things when my depression is at its absolute worst. When I'm at my lowest, I'm actually at my best. And that's a gift that I would never have if I didn't both have a mental illness and own up to it. I don't feel pressure and I don't feel nerves, which is really handy when you're doing a TEDx talk on the other side of the world. And I'm very, very aware of my vulnerabilities. I'm very, very aware of what makes me not such a good version of myself. Which means I can actually accept those, invulner those vulnerabilities and those imperfections in you a lot easier than most of the general public too as well. And that's actually pretty handy and that's a pretty good gift to have as well. I understand humans. I understand human connection. As an addict and as someone who needs that connection and needs people around me, I understand community and connection much more than I understand isolation and sadness. And I can pick those out and there's people who also need that. I also understand that and I can help you out in that way as well. And that's an absolute gift in my mental illness. And above all, I know the value of kindness. Because kindness has saved my life a couple of times. Literally saved my life. When you're at your very, very lowest point and when you've, when you've planned your death a couple of times, you don't need sarcasm, you don't need an attack, you don't need guilt or shame. What you need is somebody to just be there for you, to show you empathy and love and understanding and someone just to care and someone just to be kind. I understand the value of human kindness better than most and that's an absolute gift of what I've gone through mentally. So here's the two gifts I want to leave to you today. The first thing is, it's not what you are, it's what you do. Your deeds and your actions and, your, uh, and what you do and how you help and how you show up for people, how you show up for yourself, is always going to be so much more important than what you say. So if you're sitting here today or if you're watching this later and you have a mental illness or you're, you, you, know, you feel like you're a bit different, don't sweat it. People want to be with you, people want to find the best in you, people want you to find the best in them. If you know somebody who has a mental illness, reach out to them. If you know somebody who has a mental illness and wants to work for you, think about, consider employing them. If you have a brother, a sister, a father, a mother, a son or a daughter who has a mental illness, do not discard them. The gifts that they have to bring to you and your family and your business and your community are great, great gifts. And the gifts of all those things come from being a little bit different, from being a little bit off, from having that knowledge that you are just a little bit different than everyone else because of your mental illness. And the second gift that I want to leave and the last gift I want to leave with you is the most important one. No matter who reaches out to you, no matter how you're feeling, if you're an entrepreneur, there's a really good chance you're going to be feeling like me at some stage. If you are feeling that, or if you see somebody else who might be feeling that, Please, please, please remember the, va the value and the power of kindness because kindness wins. Kindness will always win. Thank you very much. Thank you.